The Lord be with you. And also with you. Our Lord ascended, but not to leave us, so that our joy would be fulfilled in the Holy Spirit, and so that we would continue in his word, possessing all the gifts of Christ from his resurrection. Let us open with prayer. Heavenly Father, keep us steadfast in your word that we may hold on to the hope of eternal life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most, Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, as your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, ascended into the heavens, so may we also ascend in heart and mind and continually dwell there with him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The first reading for the ascension of our Lord is from Acts, the first chapter. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up, after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. To them he presented himself alive after his suffering by many proofs appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, Will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, And a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who is taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. This lesson is from Ephesians, the first chapter. For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him his head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all and all. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. 
the 24th chapter. Then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple blessing God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. and my mouth will declare your praise. Jesus lifted up his hands and he blessed the disciples. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried into heaven. Ascension, joy. Jesus, don't leave. Lord, stay with us. 
Is Jesus social distancing? Is it the great reset? Zoom and Skype meetings with God? A digital world in the metaverse? TikTok? Synthetic and fake and plastic world is filled with separation, abandoned, deserted, isolated, lonely, empty. The spiritual separated from the physical in the dark age of shutdowns. And in distance, relationships break down. Isolation and absence marks the day. But ascension is filled with joy because the Lord has fulfilled all that he has said. The Lord comes to dwell with his people. I will be your God and you will be my people. Never to leave, never to forsake. Jesus from heaven down to earth brings you up to God. John 1. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. We've seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son from the father full of grace and truth. Adam and Eve had the dark memory of being driven from paradise with the cherubim, with the flaming sword going back and forth, separated from God's presence. Jesus, the God man from heaven down to earth restores you to God. Children of Adam, there's good news of great joy. The curse is gone. Blessings reign in Christ, and it's restoration, reconciliation. As Jesus was hung, crucified on the cross, suspended between heaven and earth to get rid of the separation, to get rid of your sin, pride and arrogance were crucified on Good Friday, and your sins were paid for in full. And when Jesus dies, the curtain temple is torn in two, from top to bottom. In the body of Jesus, who's now the great high priest over the house of God, so draw near to God with a true heart, in full assurance of faith, ascension joy. God for sinners, sinners redeemed, Purchased in the blood of Christ, in Jesus crucified, risen, and ascended. To go where no man has gone before, into heaven. John 3, Jesus says, No one has ever ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. Christ goes to prepare a place for you, and he'll come again to take you to be where he is. Jesus, the God-man, brings you to the Father. God for you, God with you, is ascension joy. In Jesus' risen and ascended power, seated at the right hand of the Father. Seated at the right hand of the Father is not a position of location. It is Christ's position of power, reigning and ruling over his church by his word. God has delivered you from the dominion of darkness. He's transferred you into the kingdom of his beloved son. Christ is the head of the body, his church. Jesus is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in Christ he might be preeminent. Our Lord is for you, Christ with you, Christ for you. And he gives you his word, his Holy Spirit-filled word, to be preached, to be confessed, that repentance and forgiveness of sins be preached in Jesus' name to all nations. The preaching of the kingdom of God. These are Christ's words to be with you. Faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Where two or three gather in Christ's name, there I am among them. God comes to you in holy baptism. And he brings you into his family. He makes you children of God. Born again through pure water. Titus 3. God's mercy was given to you. By the washing of regeneration. The renewal of the Holy Spirit. Whom God poured out on you richly. Through Jesus Christ our Savior. Washed through water and the word. And in baptism the separation is gone. 
And now God builds you up in his church, reconciled to God in the body of Christ. He killed the hostility that the preaching of peace might go forth. And today the Lord comes to you in his holy supper. Jesus' very real presence to bless sinners, as Paul teaches, 1 Corinthians. The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? A foretaste of the feast to come. It's the best of meats and the finest of wines. The best of meats, the body of Christ. The best of wines, the blood of Jesus fills the chalice. And Jesus is the host, Jesus is the butler, and Jesus is the meal. God for you to dine in repentance and faith. Acts 2. The church is devoted to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to the prayers. Ascension joy. Christ with you and the life of the church is to worship the risen and ascended Lord. And God is giving out gifts to his church. Ephesians. God's grace was given to each one of you according to the measure of Christ's gift. Christ ascended on high, and he led the captives in his train. He gave gifts to men. He who descended is the very one who also ascended far above all the heavens. Christ gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, the building up of the body of Christ. So this weekend is Memorial Day weekend, and it's not about pool parties or sales of mattresses. Memorial Day is about honoring those who gave the ultimate price, who gave their life for freedom, liberty paid for in blood to fight against tyrants. Greater love has no one than this, than one lay down his life for his friends. And you can go and visit the cemeteries. It's marked by rows and rows of crosses throughout the world, paid with American treasure, the sons of liberty. But on this Ascension Day, we worship a risen Lord, one who died for our freedom and got up out of the grave to continue to fight, to fight tyranny of sin, death, and the devil. If the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. The Lord's with his church, the Lord's for his church, and we worship him in spirit and in truth, filled with joy, even though the enemies are all around us. We worship in confidence because the Lord comes to bless you the disciples worshipped him. They returned to Jerusalem with great joy. They were continually in the temple blessing God. They worshipped Jesus who was not absent, but present. Present to bless. Christians are filled with confidence to then to the most holy place by the blood of Jesus. A new and living way opened for us through the curtain. That is through Jesus' body. Since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. And the ascension march is a procession of victory, a march of life into life everlasting, where one day we'll reach the hallowed halls of heaven with Christ as our victor. Christ high ascended, now in glory seated, throned and exalted, victory completed. Death's dread dominion finally defeated. Christ, who is dying, won for us salvation. Lives now the firstborn of new creation. Christ in his splendor, all dominion gaining. Christ with his people, evermore remaining. At his parting, joy shall banish griefing. Faith in his presence, strengthening our believing. Filled with the spirit, love and power receiving. We are his witnesses. Rejoice in the comfort of ascension. Promises made, promises kept. In the name of Jesus, amen.
Rejoice in our Lord's gifts, rejoice in His mercy. We as God's people confess them before the world. Today we use the words of the Nicene Creed. Please stand for the confessing of the Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again.
stand for prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, bless the proclamation of your Son that many may believe and be baptized by your Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, preserve your church here and scattered throughout the world. Give steadfast faith in the pure preaching of your word and the right administration of your sacraments. We ask that you send laborers into your harvest. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Fathers, bless our homes with love and patience as we await the day of resurrection. Be the companion and consolation of those who live alone. Strengthen husbands and wives so that their love exemplifies the love between Christ and his church. Bless parents and children as they live under your word. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, your Son will shatter kings when he executes judgment on the nations. Keep our leaders from acting in ways that will earn them his wrath. Bless our leaders with wisdom to govern us in accord with your right ways. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, deliver those who suffer in our midst from sickness, disease, and give them quick recovery according to your goodwill, especially with Brian, Myrtle, Florence, Don, James, Betty, Dale, Larry, Dan, Carolyn, Janelle, and Theo. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Father, turn us from hardness of heart and unbelief. Help us by your spirit to believe the witness of those who witnessed Jesus after his resurrection, that we may joyfully eat your son's body and blood in a worthy manner in repentance and sincere faith. Lord, in your mercy. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. For to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give the thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death, and by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying. teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the 
Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
let us pray. O God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in the sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.